Paul. I'm very honored to participate in India Construction Week 2020. I will be speaking to you today about the Panama construction sector pandemic experience. Our presentation will include a brief introduction, then we will talk about the industry lockdown, followed by a transition towards restart, and we will end with the beginning of our restart. Before we get started with the presentation, I would like to take a few minutes to tell you where we're located. Panama is in Central America, as you can see, in the Western Hemisphere, a good distance from where you're located in India. Panama is the last country of the Northern North America continent, which joins South America. Panama has a peculiarity in that it is located in a horizontal position. As you can see, we have our neighbors, Costa Rica is to our west and Colombia is to our east. And so we have the Pacific Ocean on the south and the Caribbean on the north. In this map, you can see a divide in the middle of the country which is the Panama Canal. We are a small country, 75,000 square kilometers, with a population of only 4.2 million people and a GDP of 73.4 billion, which was estimated for 2020. Of course, that's before the pandemic. The effect of the pandemic in time we can see in this presentation. We all know that the pandemic was declared in March and a few days after it was declared, we had a full construction industry lockdown. Then we had a couple of months where the government had to work hard to set up safety protocols in order for the economy to get started again. We were allowed to do a partial opening for the public sector in early June. However, the private sector was not allowed to start any activity until the middle of September. So this is a timeline that we will be talking about and working with. The start of the lockdown was very quick. As you can see on March 8th, we had our first case of COVID-19 confirmed in Panama in the local high school. Two days later, we had our first death reported in Panama from a high school professor. On March 11th, the World Health Organization officially declares a global pandemic. And then on March 13th, the government declared a national state of emergency. On March 19th, health measures restrictions are implemented according to economic sectors by the government of Panama to minimize spread of COVID-19. And on March 25th, construction sector is totally paralyzed with a full lockdown only 17 days after the first confirmed case in Panama. Following the lockdown, there are a series of measures implemented by the government. First, there was a creation of a cabinet level task force to oversee all pandemic related issues, including cabinet members from the health, security, education, labor, commerce, agriculture, social development, and social security. And then we had school closures at all levels, including public and private. There was also the establishment of epidemiological containment areas. There was a prohibition of access to mass gatherings like beaches, rivers, sporting events, casinos, churches, any event that had more than 10 people. All foreign flights were restricted from entering Panama 
and our international airport was shut down. In addition, testing protocols were developed and initiated, including contact tracing. Hospital capacity, equipment, and personnel were incremented. Development of temporary use field hospitals and hotels used as hospitals to take in uh, mid-level patients. We had key pandemic indicators established and reported and this was done on a daily basis through community communications. We also had implementation of strict curfews and we also had liquor sales were banned. Additional measures implemented by the government that locked down included individual circulation was restricted by gender and hours according to a national ID. Labor contracts and employer obligations furloughs were implemented. Financial obligation furloughs were also implemented. Community outreach via food and monetary support, according to need, was distributed by the government. Following all of these actions by the government which control the lockdown, we initiated a transition period where basically the economy needed to be reactivated under certain rules and guidelines. So upon closure of the economy, weekly meetings were established between high-level government officials and the private sector, including the Panama Construction Chamber, to develop a plan for restart. These meetings took more than two months to develop a guideline. So on May 11th, the Panama government announces these guidelines to be followed by the private sector in order to restart activities with COVID-19 considerations. Extensive development of virtual platforms was required by the government institutions at all levels with training provided for elaboration of biosecurity or safety protocols in order to safely restart operations. Then on June 1st, authorities allow restart of selected public construction activities, gradually increasing in number, prioritized according to required use. Example, hospitals, food supply projects, transportation projects, any projects that were deemed high priority in order for the economy to get reactivated. Once the public sector projects got started and slowly our industry began to move, on September 7th, the Panama construction sector are allowed to restart gradually following all the biosecurity or safety protocols for COVID-19 prevention as established by the government. These would include establishment of safety committees per work location to include office and field representatives. We also had COVID-19 testing of all workers. We had physical distancing enforced greater than two meters between individual workers. Mandatory use of breathing protection, frequent hand washing, symptom monitoring and tracing, and medical support on call. These were some of the regulations that were required in order for any project to get started on the private sector as well as the public sector. In this slide, we show a few of the pictures from several job locations. Uh, initially, we did the antigen testing where workers were required to do COVID-19 testing and follow-up testing on restart of work activities. Also, the symptom monitoring and distancing, which was carried out when arriving at work, as well as during the work progress or work shifts. 
constant hand washing has been promoted through educational campaigns of COVID-19 awareness in order to avoid COVID-19 dissemination. And finally, the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Labor and the media constantly demand reporting and follow-up of COVID-19 procedures, procedures and results. Our restart has been very slow and we have challenges ahead of us. Currently, only 30% of the before COVID activity has been able to restart. The construction sector has assumed significant costs related to per worker expenses to meet all safety protocol requirements. The public sector financing has been very slow to initiate projects. Infusion of public sector capital in the form of outstanding debt payment has not been addressed. Private sector investments and restart are hesitating as the economy is projected to have a 40% drop in GDP in 2020. Finally, labor contract furloughs expire on 31 December 2020, creating unfortunately, some labor uncertainty and potential unrest for 2021. These are important challenges that we face in our construction industry because of this pandemic that we are all facing in all our countries. With that, I thank you very much for your time and interest. We have to all work together to get back on track, to put all our economies to work, to be able to reconstruct our construction industry. So thank you again, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I have my email. I can answer them by email, 